Hello, my name is Bill LaPrade. I'm a member of the Metro West Shine program, and uh, I'm a volunteer here in Westboro to uh, provide assistance to people on going on Medicare or on Medicare to help them understand what Medicare is all about and some of the options that are available with it. And uh, this is presented by the, the Metro West Shine program. Uh, some people will ask, what does Shine stands for? It stands for serving the health insurance needs of everyone. And that implies people that have Medicare. It used to be serving the health insurance needs of elders, but now that uh, people who are eligible for disability uh, through Social Security also get put on Medicare after two years, and that's the reason it now says health insurance needs of everyone, as long as they're on Medicare. Okay, there are 600 plus highly trained certified counselors across the state of Massachusetts. We provide free and unbiased insurance information and counseling to Medicare beneficiaries of all ages and their caregivers. Appointments with certified SHINE counselors are available at the senior centers. So if you wanted to make an appointment here, you would call the Westboro Senior Center, make an appointment. I'm usually there on Thursday mornings and uh, make an appointment. Okay, why plan for Medicare? This is aimed at people who are turning 65 soon and want to understand a little bit about Medicare. Uh, so I'm going to explain why you should plan ahead of time. Enrolling at the wrong time can result in delayed coverage and lifetime penalties, and I'll get into more details on that. The Medicare rules and options are very complex. Healthcare costs are a significant portion of total expenses in retirement. That's the reason it's important to check into this ahead of time. The average annual out-of-pocket spending on health care services and premiums by Medicare beneficiaries in 2013 was $6,150. So as you can see, uh, health care becomes a significant part of your budget once you uh, get ready to retire. Okay, what is Medicare? It's a federally funded health insurance program. Medicare covers some of the cost of some health care services. Not all the costs and not all health care services. Generally, Medicare coverage is available for health care services that are considered medically reasonable and necessary for the treatment or diagnosis of illness or injury. So it does not cover uh, things that you may elect to do like having a facelift or something like that. But if it's medically needed, Medicare uh, typically will cover it. There are four parts to Medicare. Part A is hospital insurance. Now for most people, this does not cost anything. The hospitalization insurance gets covered by the fact that you, during your working uh, career, you've been contributing to uh, Social Security all along. It's been taken right out of your paycheck. Obviously, if you haven't uh, had a job where you contribute to Social Security, then you would have to pay for Part A hospitalization insurance. Otherwise, it would be free. Part B is medical insurance uh, that is used to cover doctor's uh, appointments, doctor's uh, services, things like x-rays, that sort of thing. Part B does, in fact, have a cost incurred with it. For the majority of people, it's about $135 a month. For higher income people, it can go up in... Uh, up in cost. And uh, if you had an appointment, I can go through with you what your costs would be based on your uh, based on your income. What they do is they look back at your, uh, social, your uh, tax return from two years ago and they base the cost of the Med Medicare Part B on what your income was. But unless it's quite high, typically it's like I say, it's going to be about $135 a month at least this year. Each year it tends to go up a bit. Part C, uh, Medicare Advantage plans uh, like HMOs and PPOs, these include Part A and Part B and sometimes Part D coverage. In fact, generally I would only suggest to people to get one that has Part D coverage because that covers your drugs. And Part D is your Medicare prescription drug coverage and everyone should have a, a 
Part D plan, regardless of whether they take prescriptions or not, because someday as they get older, they will probably need prescriptions. Okay. Now, going on from there, who is eligible? Individuals aged 65 years or older, or individuals under 65 who have received Social Security disability insurance for 24 months, or also individuals with end-stage renal disease, called ESRD or ALS, may be eligible without a 24-month waiting period. When can you enroll? The initial enrollment period for Medicare is a seven-month period starting three months before the month of your 65th birthday. It includes the month of your birthday and three months afterwards. That's how we come up with the seven-month period. If you're already receiving Social Security benefits when you turn 65, you are automatically enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part D. It's up to you to enroll in Part D, which is your drug plan. If you are not receiving Social Security benefits when you turn 65, which is the majority of people run into this situation, you will not be automatically enrolled and you must enroll through Social Security. And you can apply online by setting up a Social Security uh, account. When Medicare will start. If you enroll during the three months prior to your 65th birthday, your coverage will begin the first month of the month you turn 65. Someone that's going to retire right at 65, it's a good idea to enroll three months prior so that their coverage starts as soon as they uh, stop working at 65. Uh, the exception is if your birthday is the first of the month, then it will begin the first of the prior month. So, if, for example, if you were born on November 1st and you enrolled in Medicare, it would uh, actually take place, it would be effective October 1st. Other than that, it would be on the first day of the month of your birthday. Now, as we mentioned before, the, you do have three months after uh, you turn 65, and I'll just and go through with you. Uh, if you enroll in the month of your initial enrollment period, if you turn 65, uh, the month you turn 65, it'll be one month after enrollment. If it's one month after 65, it's two months after enrollment. If you enroll two months after you turn 65, it's three months after enrollment. And also, uh, three months after you turn 65, it'll be three months after enrollment. So if you want your insurance coverage to start at the time you turn 65, it's important to enroll during that first three months prior to uh, turning 65 so that it'll be effective the month you turn 65. When should you enroll? If you or your spouse are still working when you become eligible, when to sign up for Medicare and what parts one needs is determined by the number of employees at the company you work at. If it's a company with less than 50 employees, there can be some restrictions. Uh, the type of coverage and whether you have a high deductible health plan with a health savings account. Part A. Most people enroll in Part A when they turn 65 since it is usually premium free. As I mentioned, and as long as you've contributed to Social Security, it's free, so you might as well enroll when you turn 65. Part B, you may delay enrollment without penalty if you are covered by an employer group health plan through your own or a spouse's current employment. Now it's important, the words current employment. Uh, the only way you can delay Part B is if you are currently employed, actively employed, and you are covered by a employer group health plan. Part D, very similar, you may in delay enrollment without penalty if you have a credible drug plan coverage through your uh, employer's group health plan. And typically, most health plans do have credible drug coverage. By credible, it means as good as Medicare Part D. Now, uh, on Part A, the one time you would want to not join right away when you turn 65 is if you are contributing to a health savings account. A lot of companies now have uh, in health insurance plans with a high deductible, so what they offer is a health savings account so that you can put aside tax money before taxes are taken out into a savings account to be used along with your uh, health plan. Uh, but if you sign up for Part A, uh, they look back in the six months prior to signing up for 
Type A, you can be eligible for late enrollment penalties. In other words, that tax-free money that you've been using for that health savings account, they're going to want to get that back, and they also incur a interest on that on that money. So, you can delay Part A for a six-month period, and after you stop contributing to your HSA, now you can uh, continue to use the HSA. It's just that you want to stop contributing to it prior to getting on Part A. Okay, a uh, special enrollment period for delayed Part B enrollment. If you delay Part B because you or your spouse are currently employed and covered by an employer group health plan, you have an eight-month special enrollment period when you stop working or lose health insurance if you are out of your initial enrollment period. You must enroll in Part B while employed or during the eight months after to avoid the late enrollment penalty. Uh, the Part B uh, penalty is a lifetime increased penalty premium of 10% of the cost of Part B for each 12 months of delayed enrollment. So it's important to uh, sign up for Part B as soon as you stop working if you have delayed it because you're going to work after 65. If the special enrollment period is missed, you must wait until the general, general enrollment period, which runs from January 1st to March 31st each year, to apply for coverage, and it won't start until July 1st. So it's important if you want to get your coverage when you stop working to get enrolled prior to that point in time. If you delay enrollment in Part B because you have union or employable, employer credible drug coverage, you have a 63-day special enrollment period after your credible drug coverage ends. So if you retire at the end of October, you've got 63 days in which to sign up for a drug plan or else there's also a penalty that gets added to that. The Part D penalty is a lifetime increased premium of 1% per month for each month of delayed enrollment of the uh, average cost of a Part D plan. Medicare beneficiaries, whether they're working or not, must have credible drug coverage to avoid the Part D late enrollment penalty. So as I mentioned earlier, whether or not you're taking prescriptions, it's good to sign up for Part D as soon as you're eligible so that you don't have that uh, penalty. And you can get a pretty reasonably priced uh, drug plan if you don't take any prescriptions. If you do not have a special enrollment period for Part D, you must wait until the open enrollment period, which runs from October 15th to December 7th, to enroll for coverage beginning January 1st. That's the open enrollment for everyone, October 15th to December 7th. And that happens every year so that you can change coverages for the following year. Now, let me talk about COBRA coverage in Medicare. Most people may continue health care insurance for a limited time through COBRA when they leave their job. However, COBRA does not qualify as current employment and does not protect you from the Part B late enrollment penalty. COBRA usually covers credible drug coverage and does, does protect you from the Part D late enrollment penalty. In most cases, COBRA is considered secondary to Medicare, uh, but you also may need Part B when you have COBRA. Original Medicare and GAPS, uh, let me explain how each, each parts of Medicare work. Part A, which is your hospitalization and skilled nursing care, is premium free for most people as mentioned, but there are gaps in it. Uh, hospital deductibles and co-pays you're liable for, as well as if you went to a limited uh, skilled nursing facility or rehab facility after being hospitalized for a while. Medicare will typically cover the first three weeks in a rehab facility. After that, you are on your own to pay for it. Part B, uh, these are your doctor's visits, outpatient care, and preventive services. Your premium varies by income, as mentioned earlier, and there are gaps. Uh, there's an annual deductible. 20% uh, of the copay for most Part B services uh, you are responsible for and no coverage for routine hearing, vision, dental services, or foreign travel. So uh, the annual deductible right now is $185 for Part B. After you have satisfied that, Medicare will cover 80% of your costs, the other 20% you're responsible for. Part B uh, 
For free preventive benefits that come with Part B include mammograms, some pap smear and pelvic exams, colorectal screenings, diabetes self-management training and tests, bone mass measurements, prostate cancer screening, obesity screening and counseling, depression screening and counseling, and an annual wellness visit. Uh, by a wellness visit, it's similar to a physical, but it's, it's not as quite as uh, complex. Uh, update the individual's medical and family history, record your height, weight, body mass index, blood pressure, and other routine measurements, provide for personal health advice, and coordinate appropriate referrals and health education. That's what's included with the annual wellness visit. Okay, uh, your Medicare coverage choices. Uh, this is kind of a complex thing to talk about, but you decide how you want to get your coverage. As mentioned, over in the upper left corner there, Part A is your hospitalization insurance, Part B is your medical insurance. We went through what those, what those cover and what they don't cover. Part D is your standalone uh, prescription drug plan. Now, uh, what you can do, decide if you need to add additional supplemental medical coverage. The gaps in uh, Medicare, both Part A and Part B, can be covered with a supplement core or a supplement one plan. <coughs> In which case you would have, uh, after Medicare pays their portion, the Medigap or supplement plan would continue to pay what otherwise you would have to pay on your own. Or you can take what's called a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, like an HMO or a PPO. This is called Part C. It combines Part A, Part B, and usually Part D, and like I say, I always recommend make sure you get a Part D with your Medicare Advantage plan, seeing you need to have a drug plan anyway. Part B drug coverage is limited to plan the plan offered by the HMO or PPO. Whereas if you have on the other side of the chart the supplement or the supplement one plan, the uh, drug coverage is not covered, you need to get a separate uh, standalone PDP which is fine because then you can select the PDP that works best for your set of prescriptions. If you join a Medicare Advantage plan with drug coverage, a Medicare-PD, you cannot join another drug plan and you don't need and cannot be sold a Medigap policy. The main reason being is when you have a Advantage plan, you're letting the Advantage plan, the HMO or the PPO, take care of your health care needs as opposed to Medicare. And for this reason, you get the uh, premiums a much lower cost with these than if you weren't on Medicare, because Medicare will help subsidize the cost of the premiums for these Advantage plans. Uh, Medicare supplement plans, uh, Medigaps, are sold by private insurance companies, and there are two options. There's a core plan and a supplement one. Uh, these are for coverage for Medicare deductibles and coinsurance. Now, the core plan does not cover the deductibles that you get with Part A and Part B. And the Supplement 1 will cover everything, so you would have no co-pays, no uh, deductibles at all. There's also no network restrictions uh, with a uh, Medigap plan. You can go to any doctor that takes Medicare, and virtually all doctors take Medicare. The drug coverage is not included, as mentioned earlier, uh, so you do need to get a separate drug plan. And there is continuous open enrollment with one of these. So if you only had Medicare and you got partway through the year and decided you didn't want to continue having copays and deductibles, you can sign up for a Medigap plan any time during the year. However, on the, the uh, Medicare Part C or your Advantage plans, HMOs and PPOs are available through most of the local uh, Insurance, health insurance companies, and the coverage is provided through the private plans with networks of doctors. They usually have premiums, co-pays, and co-insurance that you are responsible for. And prescription drug coverage is usually covered. Uh, with these plans, you need to use their network of doctors, as opposed to the Medigap plans where you can go to any doctor. 
Okay, Medicare supplement versus Medicare Advantage plans. If you're trying to decide which way to go, this chart shows the, the uh, pros and cons of each. With the uh, Medigap or Supplement 1, you have a higher monthly premium, but no co-pays or co-insurance. Uh, all of that is covered. By co-insurance, that's the same as saying co-pays. You have a freedom to choose doctors because uh, any doctor will take this that takes Medicare. And no referrals are necessary as are needed when you have a network of doctors. Some uh, uh, skilled nursing facility stays and some routine services are not covered. Uh, annual physical vision and hearing are not covered where some of those are in fact covered by a Advantage plan. And uh, it covers you anywhere in the United States as well as foreign travel when you have a Medigap or a Supplement 1 plan. On the other side of the chart, we have the Advantage plans. Generally lower premiums, but you will have co-pays. And it's generally restricted to the network of doctors. A PPO allows you to go out of your network, but you still pay more than, but more than if you stayed in the network of doctors. And you may need referrals for uh, additional services, as opposed to being able to choose any doctor you want. Uh, it may include extra benefits, like an annual physical, vision, or hearing. Now, the vision and hearing, I will point out, those are typically just an annual checkup and possibly some help toward uh, a set of hearing aids or uh, a set of glasses, maybe once a year. And only urgent and emergency services provided outside of a, the area that you're in. So, for example, if you lived in Massachusetts and vacationed in Florida, uh, you would not be covered unless it was an emergent, urgent and emergency service, as opposed to the Supplement 1 plan where it's covered anywhere in the United States. Okay, Pat, let's talk a little bit more about Part D coverage. Part D provides outpatient prescription drugs and is optional, but a penalty may apply for late enrollment, as mentioned earlier. Uh, Medicare beneficiaries with Part A and or Part B are eligible for signing up for a drug plan. They are provided by standalone plans or Medicare Advantage plans. As mentioned, if you have a uh, supplement plan, you have to get a standalone drug plan to go with it. If you have an Advantage plan, the drug plan comes included as part of the Advantage plan. Okay, the Part D standard benefit. Now, the coverage phase, there's a deductible period. If the drug plan has a deductible with it, and most of them do, uh, typically the full cost of your drugs until a deductible amount is reached. The deductible amount, at least this year for the majority of these plans, is $415 that you would pay full cost of your drugs until you paid out $415. Uh, some of them have a reduced uh, deductible, less than that. Uh, typically, your premium, your premium will be uh, lower with a plan with a deductible. If there's no deductible with the plan, then you can expect to play, pay a higher premium. In other words, you'll either pay more per month or you'll pay it through the deductible portion when you go to pick up your prescriptions. There is an initial coverage period. After the deductible is met, the plan pays uh, co-pays and co-insurance such that uh, your drugs will be a much reduced cost, typically much re reduced. And there's also a coverage gap of, you've probably heard of the donor hole, typically based on higher percentage of the retail cost of uh, retail drugs. This only, you only get into the coverage gap if the full cost of your drugs uh, reach a, uh, a point of somewhere around 3000 and a so 3000 and some dollars. At that point, you go into what's called the coverage gap. And then you will pay a higher amount for your, your drugs than you would have during the initial uh, coverage period. And then there's a catastrophic period. For some people who have very expensive prescriptions that do hit the uh, coverage gap, when their out-of-pocket costs reach a significant amount, and I don't have, know the exact amount with me right now, it's a fairly high amount, then your co-pays and co-insurance are greatly reduced. 
very few people hit that catastrophic period. Uh, and the beneficiary advances after reaching certain dollar limits. Okay, choosing a Part D plan. Plans vary in cost, the drug to cover drugs, or the formulary that they cover, restrictions such as quantity limits, prior authorization, or step therapy, and there's also pharmacy networks. Uh, if you use a pharmacy that is not part of the network for that particular drug plan, you'll pay full cost for your prescriptions. Uh, if you use a network pharmacy, it would be less. And a lot of them have preferred uh, network pharmacies where they even get preferred pricing where it would be even less than that. So you have to, the best thing to do is find the one that covers the drugs you take with the lowest cost and fewest restrictions and is accepted by the pharmacy. For help, we use the Medicare Plan Finder. You can do this yourself online. Uh, in the past, it was by logging into medicare.gov and finding a plan. Uh, coming up is a new plan finder, which is a little more, uh, gonna be a little more difficult to use and you'll need to actually set up a Medicare account in order to use it. The best way to find a drug plan is to make an appointment with a Shine counselor such as myself and I can go through that on the computer with the plan finder and find you the best drug plan. Take into account the uh, monthly premium, a deductible if there is one, the cost for each drug, each drug, and what it'll do is it'll come up with a estimated annualized cost for every drug plan available, and it'll list them from lowest cost down. So that uh, the best thing to do is go to the top of the list and. For your set of prescriptions, that would be the most, the most cost-effective drug plan for you. Now, let's talk a little bit about the open enrollment period for Part D and Medicare Advantage. October 15th to December 7th every year is an open enrollment period where you can change the coverage you have to be effective on January 1st of the following year. And plans change every year, so it's always advisable to... Uh, Take advantage of the open enrollment period and see if what you have is still the best plan for the upcoming year. You, typically your health can change, your list of prescriptions can change, the plans obviously change, their prices tend to go up each year. So it's important to compare plans every year. Okay, uh, what does Medicare cost in 2019? Just to give you an example. Uh, part A, as mentioned, premium free for most but with deductibles and copays. Part B, as mentioned, uh, for most, it's $135.50 per person. Those with higher incomes can pay up to $437. It goes up in steps based on what your income is. And it has a deductible in coinsurance. Part C, Medicare Advantage premiums range anywhere from zero premium up to $292 per month per person. And with that, you also have co-pays and co-insurance. Part D, your drug plan premiums range from $14, which is the lowest cost drug plan, which is recommended for anyone not taking prescriptions, up to $128 a month. Uh, it has deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurance. Uh, sometimes a more expensive drug plan works the best if you have expensive prescriptions, where maybe your co-pays will be much less if you pay a higher monthly premium. And the Medigap plans, or supplement plans, premium range from $98 to $163 for the core plan and range from $198 to $261 for the supplement one plan. One thing I'll point out when it comes to a Medigap plan, if in fact it's the first thing you're going to do after you go on Medicare and you sign up within the first six months, you'll typically get a 15% discount for the first year on your premium. 10% the second year, and 5% discount the third year. So it wouldn't be until year four that you would pay the full amount of the cost of the Medigap or supplement insurance. Okay, public benefit programs. There are programs to help pay for the cost of Medicare. Programs are based on income and or assets. A Shine counselor can help determine program eligibility and assist with applications. So if you believe you are have uh, low income, fairly low uh, assets, in other words, money in the bank and so forth, 
There may be uh, public benefit programs that can help you pay for the cost of your Medicare. Uh, for Medi Medicare assistance, uh, this is the general number for Shine, 1-800-AGE-INFO, and then you press 3, which is 1-800-243-4636. However, if you want to set up an appointment, like for example, uh, you want to set up an appointment with me to go over your particular situation, you would call the Senior Center here in Westboro at 508-366-3000. Uh, the number for Medicare is 1-800-MEDICARE or 1-800-633-4227. And the Social Security Administration, if you wanted to sign up for Medicare, you go through Social Security and you would dial 1-800-772-1213. Now once again, what I've just gone through is very, uh, as you can see, it's complex. There's a lot to try to grasp. And I would advise when you're getting ready to turn 65, make an appointment, call the senior center, make an appointment, come in and see me, and I can go through all of this in detail for your particular situation, especially if you plan to work beyond your retirement age. Uh, we can go through how you can delay uh, coverage and that sort of thing. So that's the important thing is uh, don't try to do this on your own. You're best off to Talk to a Shine counselor like myself. Okay, and uh, that would be it for uh, for this program. And like I say, make an appointment if you want to get more detailed information about your particular situation. Thank you for your for watching.